I'm at Homestead Miami Speedway and I'm going to race a freaking Formula 4 with International Motorsports for the Formula Inter Series. This is my first experience, first race, and first podium in a Formula car in real life. This is not just a test drive, it's a full race weekend with practice, qualifying, and two races. If you don't know me, I'm Suelio Almeida, racing driver, live tech sim racing coach, and creator of the Motor Racing Checklist online course. In this video, I'll share this insane experience driving a Formula 4 coming solely from sim race. We'll go from getting in the car for the first time to actually racing, avoiding crashes, battling for position, and getting a podium. All the chapters are listed in the description. If you like this kind of content, please make sure to leave a comment and like the video. International Motorsports is a professional and international kart and Formula 4 racing team based in Miami, Florida. Their purpose is to develop racing drivers from all ages and backgrounds in the Americas and assisting them to reach some of the highest categories in racing, such as Formula Indy and Formula 1. Formula Inter is a single-seater racing category created in 2023 by International Motorsports with the vision of being a first-class driver development series. The series is intended to enhance the driver's skills and offers a viable entry point into higher levels of competition. The Formula Inter season starts in January and ends in September and it has 12 races and 6 calendar dates. Any driver 14 years old or older with kart experience could qualify to participate in Formula Inter. To find out if you can participate in Formula Inter, you can contact the series at the email in the description or in the website. So the very first thing I did to prepare for this race weekend was to jump in the simulator and do lots of laps. I heard the Formula 4 has a very heavy steering wheel and brake pedals where you need to push close to 100 kilos of brake force, so I used the Logitech T Pro racing wheel and pedals with maxed out force feedback and brake force to prepare for it. I tested with a USF 2000 car at the same track in iRacing, and the team told me the braking references are very similar in that combo. One thing that I focused a lot in the simulator was to try and simulate a safe approach for finding speed, trying to not crash or spin in the simulator. Of course I failed, but at least that showed me what places would be dangerous to push too hard in real life. I also watched real life onboards. It always looks easier when watching these onboards while being comfortable in your computer, but I didn't want to trick myself into thinking that would be easy. I knew it was going to be physically demanding and scary, so I tried to keep fully focused on getting the best preparation possible. So one of the things I have to do is to get in the car to adjust the seating position and distance to the pedals. It's funny that when I got in the car at first, I thought I was in the right position, but they kept telling me to go lower and lower. Drivers always say that you really don't see a lot in front of the car when sitting in the cockpit, but you have to try it yourself to fully understand that. You're not particularly comfortable in the car, the seat belts are super tight as they should, and I had to get used with pretty much lying down inside a race car. To think I'll be over 200 km per hour and so close to the ground is insane. The steering is pretty simple, not a lot of buttons, with a nice dash and feels great. The pedal shifters are quite stiff but very responsive. And the car also has brake bias adjustment in the cockpit. Ready for your first run? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Honestly, I will admit, I'm scared. I have no idea how this beast will drive and I want to take it extremely progressively. Let's experience the first two laps entirely with text comments so you can hear the pure sound and no music. Enjoy this first ride with me. How do I turn on? Up the, the switch mm -hmm. and push the green button. Yes.
ride. For now, everything hurts and there's still so much driving time left this weekend. I'm pretty sure I will be really sore after all this. But hey, nobody said racing is easy. Here are some first impressions of my first time driving the Formula 4. Force feedback. It's just incredible how the steering wheel behaves the same way it does in the sim. The steering is heavy in the Formula 4. Using the light hands technique, I was able to pretty much allow the car to self-correct on every sliding moment I have. And because of that, I never spun. Although I got pretty close to it. The braking is also insane heavy. I did not lock up at all on initial braking, even though I was braking the equivalent of 90, sometimes 100 feels of course. Now, what didn't feel great was my lap time. I was consistently a second to two seconds slower than the top drivers, even though I was experimenting different techniques and sliding all over the place. I was trail braking more and then trail braking less, then scrubbing the fronts more than less, and also trying different throttle applications, nothing worked. I felt like I was on the limit. Every time I tried a little bit more speed, I would just lose the rear no matter how much weight I was shifting. I worked hard with the team to find time and I did improve my consistency, sometimes doing many laps in a row on the same thin, but I could not find more speed than that. At this point in time, I'm just, I'm not gonna lie, I started questioning myself as a driver. Let's jump into my qualifying session on Saturday. After four more practice sessions and still sliding all over the place, I just accepted my fate for that weekend and forced myself to just keep learning, keep experimenting with the driving technique to see if I could find the time. For now, it is what it is. So let's just try to learn as much as possible with each session and even during the race. felt good. I was on the verge of sliding every corner and I felt like that was what I could do in the quality session. And still two seconds off the pace and eight tenths slower than P2. It is what it is. Let's race and learn.
it hurts to see everyone just opening up the gap. I was sending it to the point of almost losing in every corner. And even when I nailed everything, my lap was just slower. At this point, I stopped questioning myself and went to talk with the team and showed the onboard from the race one. Actually, it turns out my car was way too oversteering the entire weekend. And I didn't know because like, I mean, I knew it was oversteering, but I thought it was normal. Uh, and then I saw, I showed the onboard to the team. They were like, oh, no, 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 it's too oversteering. It's undrivable. So they actually made a change right before the last race of the entire weekend. So uh, I, will, I won't have time to test it only during the race. Let's see, if, let's see how it goes. Test a little bit. I'm gonna see if, if I gain a little bit of time. If the car is more drivable, or maybe it's gonna click and I'm gonna gain a lot of time. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna test a car that has a little bit more rear grip. And well, when I come back, I'm gonna tell you how it went. This is when things started changing. Now there is some hope. Maybe I'm not that bad of a driver. Maybe we can find a lot of time with the tire replacements. Now, with my confidence as slow as it can get, I'll just use the second race to test the new grip and see what happens. I already pretty much last in the grid anyway, so I have nothing to lose. I'll just send it.
Chasing is always gonna be a roller coaster. When you feel bad, you feel terrible, and when you feel good, you feel great. And I don't remember anything else in life being that intense. Let's be honest, I was very lucky in race two. But being able to catch up with the drivers who were leaving me in the dust on race one was everything I needed to regain the confidence in my skills as a racing driver. The change in the car allowed me to gain more than a second per lap and I was able to fight. And that's the best ending possible to this incredible weekend. Guys, everything I tried on track, all the technique, all the driving adjustments, all of that came from sim racing. If you don't think sim racers can compete in real life racing, you will be left behind very soon. Sim racing is here to stay. I'm surprised with the amount of sim racing students who moved on to try the real thing and did incredibly well. All the grip testing, trail braking, engine braking, how to find the grip as fast as possible in the new car, the lines, all this is discussed in depth in my online course, the Motor Racing Checklist. And here's a gift for you if you watched until this point. Use the coupon YouTube20 to get 20% off in the course. And if you don't like it, I will give your money back. I will make another more technical video about the differences and similarities between sim racing and real life. I will post it as fast as possible, so subscribe so you don't miss out. But for now, you might want to learn what is your driving style and how you built your technique since you started the sport. So I recommend watching this video. Love you guys. See ya.